ഹിന്നീം ഒലപത് അസലനായിലൈക്കും ആയാതിം ഉപയനാതിം ഒമസലം മിനല്ലദീന ഹലൗമിൻ ഖബ്ലികും വമൗഇദാ വമൗഇദാ തല്ലിൽ മുത്തഖീൻ സദഖല്ലാഹുൽ അസീം വബല്ലഗനാ റസൂലുഹു നബിയുൽ കരീം വനഹ്നു അലാ ദാലിക മിനശ് ശാഹിദീന വശാകിരീൻ അൽഹംദുലില്ലാഹി റബ്ബിൽ ആലമീൻ Surah Noor, we read these ayat last night as well and we were going over the meanings where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that do the nikah of the spouseless people among you and salihina min ibadikum and the capable ones among your slaves, men and women in yakunu fuqara ayunihimu allahu min fadli if they are poor, Allah will enrich them out of His grace so this applies to this also applies to where a poor person who is otherwise of a good religious character they ask the hand of our uh, somebody that we are uh, you know we are taking care of who's in our guardianship then just because they are poor we should not uh, that herein is discouragement that we turn them away just because they are poor because if somebody is poor today Allah is telling us that Allah can give make them Allah can give them with their grace in the future but if somebody is like that that they're lazy or they just don't want to work or they don't have the capacity to earn then that's a different story but if they are salih which means that they have the salahiyah salahiyah that we say in urdu that they have the capacity that they can earn then just because they are not wealthy enough we should not turn them away only for that reason and the ulama have written in detail that what should be looked for and the first and the foremost thing in a match for our uh, daughters or our sons is a religious good religious character a good religious akhlaq good religious personality and then other things become important much later on <coughs> and those who cannot afford marriage la yajiduna nikaha would mean either they do not have the money or they have the means but they are not finding somebody uh, right and appropriate for them so until that happens they should abstain they should keep themselves chaste and the way that has been explained by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they should keep on fasting continuously because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that this breaks the uh, intensity of desire hatta yughniyahum allah min fadli until allah makes them ghani allah enriches them out of his grace wal ladina yabtaguna al kitaba mimma malakat aymanukum now this is about those bonds men and women who are slaves and they are seeking kitab so here in this means a particular pact a particular agreement that a slave man or woman could make with their masters at that time that if i earn so much for you or if i do a certain thing or if i bring you so much money or so many so much anything of of value then they would make an agreement that that person would be free so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging that and here in under this the ulama have explained the islam's approach to slavery that yes the arab people in that time particularly in the whole world there was this this businesses of slaves this culture was widespread but islam fully wherever you see discourages it so allah subhanahu wa taala encourages freeing slaves all the kafarat if somebody has broken their pact 
qasam somebody is making up for their missed fasts and all those things allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has one way to make up and compensate or or do the kafara is to free slaves so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has everywhere encouraged the freedom of slaves free your slaves and here as well allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if they come with certain things for you that they are you know they are they are at the age of where they can marry and they need to marry and they come with you come to you uh, with certain proposition that if we do so much then accept that from them and similarly the way of the sahaba was that even when they would make such a pact so that pact when it is made it will become binding upon the master and the slave the sahaba would further reduce it that for example if they would decide a hundred dollars then the sahaba would say fine we'll just take one third of it or we'll let go all of it and they will give them their freedom so from the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba there we always find encouragement to give up and free the slaves and that is a very virtuous act in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala of course how deeply engraved this was in the society Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala slowly and gradually brought the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam towards the freedom of slaves فَكَاتِبُوهُمْ إِنْ عَلِمْتُمْ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا if you recognize some good in them, which means that if you see if you see that they are able to do it, then do that that kitaba fakati buhum. Make that pact. Wa atuhum mimalillahi ladi atakum and also give them from the mal, from the wealth that Allah has given to you. Under this ayah, the Mufassirin have explained that we see that in the world there is generally principally two kinds of uh, systems of e economies there is the market economy or the capitalist economy and then there is the communist or the where the government and the ruler owns everything and it's a general shared uh, you know the assets the crops everything is shared by everyone it's the property of everyone basically but Allah and Islam has given us this system that everything is in the ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and under that ownership Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given temporary control to those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best in his knowledge temporary control of wealth temporary control of people temporary control of kingdom temporary temporary control of land Allah has given to them but the real owner is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that give to them from the mal from the wealth that Allah has given to you alladhi atakum that has in the first place given to you been given to you by someone else وَلَا تُكْرِهُ فَتَيَاتِكُمْ عَلَى الْبِغَائِينَ أَرَدْنَ تَحَصُّنَا لِتَبْتَغُوا عَرَضَ الْحَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا Another thing that was prevalent in Arab people uh, was that they would use their bonds women for business so that they would fulfill the desires of certain people and would earn money for them that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden this. As soon as the ayat of prohibition of zina came, this also came that you it's not allowed that you can use the women who are under your, uh, under your bond that you can use them to earn money in this way in aradna tahassuna litabtaghu arad al hayat al dunya that you seek the uh, temporary benefit of this worldly life through this woman you krihunna and if somebody compels them find allah min ba'd ikrahihinna ghafurur rahim then after they are being compelled if somebody disobeys allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this manner then the burden of sin is not upon the woman allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafur and rahim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that they are being compelled and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive them and show mercy to them وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ آيَاتٍ مُبَيِّنَاتٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closing this chapter with saying that indeed we have sent down to you verses that are مُبَيِّنَات they are open and clear themselves and they are enlightening for the people who follow وَمَثَلًا مِنَ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ and an exemplary description of those who passed away before you the previous nations and previous people وَمَوْعِضَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and this is a good counsel for people those who have uh, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have taqwa, they will definitely take good benefit from it. This is ma'u'idah for them, good advice for them. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta s-sami'u al-alim wa tu'ala inna inna kanta tawab al-rahim. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Allahumma jalna min ahli al-Qur'an al-lazina hum ahlika wa khasatuk. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqih sayyidina wa lana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ma'ayin. Amin. Alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbi Rahim.